السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه Brothers and sisters, welcome to another live episode of your program Ask Wada uh, Let me remind you of phone numbers Area code 002-023855-131132 the last three digits, 131 or 132. The email address is ask at huda.tv. And the Facebook page where I receive the questions is DR Muhammad Salah official. Uh, while waiting for your valuable calls and questions, inshallah, I have uh, a few questions to answer. The first one is um, from Sister Asya Fayyaz. She says that I wanted to know the three divorces sent via text message at one time, are they, do they count as one or three divorces? Uh, first of all, we have to understand that Allah the Almighty prescribed the way of divorce as the last resort when the marriage life is impossible and there is no possibility for reconciliation. So Allah the Almighty says, Ya ayuha nabiyu idha talaqutumun nisa'a فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ وَأَحْصُوا الْعِدَّةِ So even in filing for divorce or giving divorce, one have to follow the sunnah which is prescribed in the Qur'an. The meaning of إِذَا طَلَّقْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ وَأَحْصُوا الْعِدَّةِ That one should not divorce his wife whenever she is minister waited. Nor should he divorce his wife after she is uh, purified from the menses. Then he happened to have sexual relations with her because of the possibility that she may have conceived during this time. So what is the proper way? The proper way, if somebody already decided to give divorce to his wife, he should wait until her period is over. Then, after she's clean from her period, without having sexual relations with her, he may give her talaq. This is one talqa, one divorce. Allah the Almighty says in Surah Al-Baqarah, الطلاق مرتان فإمساك بمعروف أو تسريح بإحسان I like to explain that because a lot of people do not perceive the meaning of الطلاق مرتان. You have the right to divorce your wife two times. Each one, each divorce should be filed or uttered or given في طهر لم يجامعها في after she has been purified from the menses without having sexual relations. Then, if he wants to divorce her again, that should not be within the same period. Rather, after another period and another purification without having sexual relations. Or, if it is in the same period, if he happened to take her back to the marriage life without a new marriage contract, because this is called Talaq al-Raj'i, revocable divorce, after the first and the second divorce. That's why Allah said, At-Talaq marratan divorce is twice. So let's say that the wife is cleaned up from the period on Saturday. On the same day, he gives her divorce. He doesn't have the right to give her another divorce or a third divorce within the same month, the same period before experiencing another menses and being clean from the next menses. Why? That's a very important question. I will answer, inshallah, after we take some calls. Sister Amber from the KSA, welcome to Ask Kuda, Sister Amber. Thank you, sir. Uh, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, welcome to the Sheikh, program. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Sheikh, I have um, two questions. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, it so happened that uh, in my Kajweed class, we were asked two questions by the teacher. Uh, where is Allah and uh, why do we go to Masjid in Abu'i? 
And uh, the answers to the questions teacher said was uh, one, uh, a lies on the earth, istawa, and uh, we go to Masjid Nabvi to, um, uh, to get the reward uh, a thousand times more by praying there. Mm. Uh, my question is, um, uh, I know uh, Allah is the greatest, the supreme, he's on the, uh, uh, I mean, the, on the highest of the uh, heavens, but uh, I find Allah also near to my heart. I find him closer to my jugular vein. That's all, also what I've read in Quran, that Allah can, he can be where I am. Uh, I mean, I find him everywhere is this wrong to say that i hope it's not uh, i mean affecting my akida i i uh, honestly strongly believe in the oneness of allah but i mean if i um so i got your that point allah is, i got your allah, point sister amber you got my point right okay yeah definitely like i i i mean allah is not um uh, cannot give him dimensions or physically just put him on the earth or like He's, he encompasses the whole universe, the people, the places, everywhere. Mm-hmm. And my second, like, uh, my intention to go to Masjid Nabi is to, for the love of my prophet, that he's my messenger, he's the prophet of mercy. I have to go, I know in my mind that I will be awarded, rewarded ten times or thousand times more, but my intention of going there is um, to pay my homage to the prophet. Is that wrong? This is what I um, have. Okay, I got your questions. questions. I, I hope you got, got your points. Thank, thank you, you so much. You most welcome. welcome. Okay, any more calls? So, uh, okay, try again, please. The call was cut off. Um, the previous question, which I was uh, answering, why الطلاق مرتان? And one cannot just say to his wife, you're divorced three times. Oh, you're divorced, you're divorced, you're divorced in the same sitting or at the same time simultaneously. Why not? The issue of divorce and the issue of ar which is the possibility of reconciling after the first divorce and after the second divorce, comes with a package of ahkam to regulate this process. Um, okay, let's take this call. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Aisha from Nigeria. Yes, Salaam Alaikum Shaykh. Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. I have one question. Yeah. The question is, is it permissible for a married woman to wear perfume and go while going outside or is it haram or halal? Wearing perfume for women while going out, right? Yes, married woman specifically. Okay, whether married or unmarried, okay. And the second question is, Hello? Yeah, I hear you, Sister Aisha. The second question is, is it permissible for a married woman to put on makeup while going out of Madrid be while she is at home? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So when Allah the Almighty says, فَإِمْسَاكٌ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ When you give divorce, Allah orders you لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن ولا يخرجن in Surah At-Talaq there is a whole chapter appointed to discuss the issue of divorce it's called Surah At-Talaq the divorce chapter a woman who has been divorced a revocable divorce should not leave her husband's house even if he wants her to leave even if she doesn't want to stay with him لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن Allah orders the husbands who just divorced their wives you do not drive your wives out of their homes ولا يخرجن nor is it permissible for them to leave even if they want to why? that increases the possibility of reconciliation and a woman in this period is recommended to wear the nicest clothes, a nice perfume in order to reconcile sometimes when the person says the word of divorce, Satan is very active, and he created trouble between the couple, then afterward they regret, both of them. How often? This is very often. Most of the cases of divorce, people come back and say, you know, for some reason I had a misunderstanding with my wife, I had an issue with my wife, and I regret what I did. If it is the second, first divorce, second divorce, there is a possibility of reconciling and revoking your divorce. That's why he said, you can keep your wife back 
or if you guys have decided that it's impossible to resume your marriage life together, then wait until the idda is over, which is either three periods or three purifications or three months for a woman who doesn't experience the period. So if you simply decided not to reconcile, wait until the idda is over. But to get three divorces in the same setting or in the same tour, that is invalid. So the husband is committing a sin. But whether the divorce is effective or not, that's a, an entirely different concept. Oh, again, inshallah, I'll answer after this call. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Anwar from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Just fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, Sheikh, actually I'm asking on behalf of one of my cousin. Yeah. Uh, he, is, uh, he wants to come to Saudi Arabia to visit uh, Medina Munawwara. Okay. Uh, he has no plans to go to Mecca, so is it allowed for him to do so? Mm -hmm. Okay, so and, and probably he was quoting me, somebody told him there is a hadith that uh, if, if somebody does this with the niyyah of going to Medina Munawwara only, he, he, uh, on the day of Qiyamah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will uh, have intercession for him, yani for, he will uh, give him... Uh, mm. yani. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair. Wa jazakum. Thank you. Anwar from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Anjum from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, assalam, Sheikh. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm originally from uh, India, but we are residing in Makkah. Mm. Uh, and uh, when we go to when we go to Medina for just a visit and to visit the Nab Masjid -e Nabwi, and uh, when we come back and we cross the Miqat, is it obligatory for us to perform Umrah? Or if we don't perform, uh, do we have to give any uh, sacrifice for that? But we originally reside in Makkah. Okay, got your question, Sister Anjum. Thank you. MashaAllah, yes. many questions with regards to visiting the sacred mosque of Al Masjid al Nabawi. Okay. Now, if a person violated the command of Allah with regards to divorce and the prescription uh, in that regard, and he still say to his wife, you're divorced, you're divorced, you're divorced three times in the same sitting or in different sittings, but within the same tohr. Or he said it once and he said three times, like he said, you're divorced three times without having to repeat the statement. According to the vast majority of the Muslim jurists, that divorce is effective and it becomes ba'in. So he doesn't have the right to take her back. He doesn't have the right to swallow his word back, even if he regretted, even if he cried, because it was his fault. What is the reference? A companion by the name Rakana, who divorced his wife, and he said that three times you're divorced. When he came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he regretted, and he felt sorry for what he did, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, he said, Ma arat, what did you intend? He said, I swear to Allah, I only meant to give her one divorce. But I just said it three. One divorce. He said, then he can take her back. It's one. Which means, if the person, like Rakan or anybody else, intended, I'm giving you three divorce, with the intention of giving you three divorces, then it becomes effective as three, and it becomes Irrevocable. Another scholar, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah mercy on him, whom many people accuse of being rigid or being extreme, is giving us a lot of ease, especially in these issues. And he said, even if he says to his wife three times, with the intention of divorcing her three times, it becomes only once. Because Allah said, At talaqu marratan. So it becomes vain. And he is liable for the sin of what he said, but the divorce is only once. This is the khilaf, the difference of opinion in this regard. And I just showed you the opinion of the vast majority of the fuqaha in this regard. And stop playing games with divorce. When you type a text message, you're divorced, that's an effective divorce. 
You pick up the phone and you say you're divorced, effective divorce. You call a friend, you tell her parents, you tell your son, I divorce your mom. That's a divorce. You don't say, I was just scaring her off or I was just threatening her. That's an effective divorce. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Joaria from Uganda. Walaikum salam, Sheikh. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Sheikh. I have one question, Sheikh. Mm -hmm. What what advice can we? In my country, it is so common. Parents, especially mothers, they 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 force their kids like eighteen, twenties, starting from twenties, like they begin to treat them like they are bad and go get boyfriends. You should marry stuff like that. Mm. What kind of advice can we give to the kids like to the kids? Because yeah. this is so common. Sister Juaria, moving si out. Sister Juaria, you're talking about two different issues. Parents encourage their kids at a marriageable age or whenever they get 18 to get married. That's one thing. And the other thing is go out and find a girlfriend or a boyfriend. That's an entirely different um, concept. Uh, you know. So w which which one exactly you're referring to or inquiring about? Point is, like Both. your. The parents are telling you, go, you should marry, go find someone, and the kid doesn't know where to find. Mm. And sometimes it happens like you, you are like a burden at, at home, so they are forced to go get apartments, live alone, stuff like that, so that they can, they can remove the burden from the, the, from the parents. Mm. So you mean that they want to get rid of their child at this age? Aywa, aywa, at the, aywa. At the younger age, and, and, I, I, and usually they are being told parents don't make any mistakes, stuff like that. Mm. So what kind of advice I can give to girls, young girls of that age, not parents, but advice for the girls? Okay, got your question, Sister Juaria. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you. Sister Amber. Uh, your question with regards to where is Allah? As you said, um, this is a question which is impossible for me to answer or for anyone unless if Allah the Almighty answered the question because I haven't seen Allah. No one has seen Allah. We knew Him through the indications of His creation and through sending the messengers to tell us who is He, what are His traits, what does He want from us. That is the only link between us and Allah. The the messengers. So in the revelation, Allah the Almighty spoke about Himself. He made us recognize Him through His beautiful uh, traits, and uh, no one is equivalent to Him, comparable to Him, as He stated in the Quran. And He mentioned in many ayat, after the creation of the heavens and the earth, He created the heavens and the earth in six days, then He rose above the throne. Then He says also another ayah, الرحمن على العرش استوى the ayah which you just quoted the most beneficent is above his throne this is what Allah said it will be best if I can limit myself to that okay what about the thought which you suggested and uh, I give you the benefit of doubt and um, I'm not you know judging your faith or anything inshallah you are a believer you are a very good believer but when the person thinks that I want to feel close to Allah Allah said so Allah said that He is the closest to you. But does this closeness has to be physical? To touch Him? To feel Him around you? What did Allah Almighty say to His Prophet, peace be upon Him, when He was in the cave? A number um, 60, uh, a number 40 of Surah at tawbah إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعْنَا Yes, this is what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said to Abu Bakr when they were hiding in the little cave of Thawr and the Meccan pagans were chasing them and they almost captured them. Abu Bakr was worried. He said, don't worry, don't worry. Allah is with us. Does it mean that Allah have dimensions to fit within this little cave? It doesn't mean that. When Moses, peace be upon him, was instructed by Allah to go along with Harun to the Pharaoh, and they said, Inna nakhafu an yafruta alayna aw an yatagha. We're afraid that this guy is crazy, he can kill us, he can, you know, hurt us. Allah the Almighty said, La takhafa innani ma'akuma. Fear not, because I'm going to be with you. How? He said, Asma'u wa ara. I hear what is going on, and I see what is going on. 
So this ma'iyya or being with doesn't have to be physical. Allah is above all things, above the creation. If his kursay, we studied at al kursay, the greatest ayah in the entire Quran of Surah Al-Baqarah, he spoke about his kursay, the footstool. Not Allah Ash, the footstool. He said it encompasses the heavens and the earth and all that exist. And the footstool compared to Al Arsh, which is Allah above, is like a ring thrown in a plain or in a huge desert. So Allah is above all of that. But His infinite hearing, His infinite sight, His infinite power, His omnipotent, gives Him the ability to see behind closed doors, to hear the crawling of an ant on a dead rock on a dark night in the middle of the night, and uh, the fish in the sea, he hears the crying of those who are in need. He doesn't have to be, you know, physically, because Allah is beyond dimensions, as you just mentioned. So he says, إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my servants ask you about me, I am near to them. How near? How near? How, how would you explain the nearness of Allah? The Quran explains it. He says, we are nearer to him than his juggler vein. Allah knows what you're even thinking about. Okay? So this is the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you say Allah is everywhere, the danger of that belief that Allah is divided everywhere, Allah is in places which even the angels refrain from entering. Bathrooms, dumpsters, you know, nightclubs, dirty places. But Allah sees these places. Everything for him is see-through. Okay? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Aisha from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Aisha. Assalamu alaikum, ya Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Just fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Aisha. How about yourself? Asha Allah, we can't wait to have you in Nigeria, Sheikh. I'm very, very excited about this journey. Inshallah. May Allah enable me to visit you and enjoy my visit and you guys inshallah insha enjoy the conference likewise. Okay, inshallah. Um, I have a um, five questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have five questions. Some of them I called and asked and I think I didn't catch the program or I don't know, I couldn't get the answer. Okay, just bring them up. Okay. Um, my first question is about the Sujood al -Saha. I asked last time. Sujood al Yes. The forgetfulness, you prostration. Now, now, if you deduct something from your prayer, and you, you are going to correct it by the Kabi, right? Yeah. And what if you forget the Kabi and leave your praying place? And then remember later, is the Sarat of any void or can you come back and do the bad? Um, okay, when did you remember? Um, after, just after you leave the praying place. Okay, I'm trying because you, you're breaking off, your sound is breaking off. You say that if somebody forgot a rak'ah for innocence in the prayer, then he also forgot to pray sujood al -sah. am I right? Yes. Okay. Okay. That is the first question. Next. My second question is about praying, praying your personal du'a in salah. For example, oh, pray for work or health or um, personal prayer in salah. Can you pray your personal? Oh, if you finish Fatiha and Surah, can you just pray, oh, Allah, give me this and that, or a reku, or a sujud? I got your question. Second, third question, Aisha, go ahead. I got your question. Okay. Um, my third question is about um, seeing Allah's name in the toilet. I know that it is um, not permissible, but what of people that take their ablution their ablution in the toilet? Or maybe I... I um, okay, next I question. I, I got the third that. question. Bring up the fourth, quickly. Okay. My first question is the distance between uh, Imam and Mahmoud, for example, if a husband is leading his life in prayer. We lost uh, that call. Okay, we got three questions. Okay. Um, your second question, Sister Amber, why do we visit Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi? 
No doubt that loving Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the greatest act of worship. Because loving Prophet Muhammad is loving Allah the Almighty. Okay? And that's why in the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, um, there are three qualities. Whoever will possess them will find the sweetness of Iman. أَن يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا To love Allah and His Messenger more than anything else. Okay. So I love to visit the Prophet's grave and I love to give salam to Prophet Muhammad's grave and I will be rewarded for that. But the prescription of visiting Medina is to visit this masjid. يعني if I'm in Medina and I decided to visit the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, will I be rewarded for that to visit and give salam? Of course. If I will be rewarded for visiting any graveyard, Muslim graveyard, what about visiting the grave of Prophet Muhammad and his best two companions, Abu Bakr and Umar? But in the hadith, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, one should not assume a journey to visit any masjid on earth except for three masjid. He mentioned Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca, his masjid in Medina, and the farthest masjid in Jerusalem. May Allah enable us to reclaim it and liberate it. Okay. So this is the intention of visiting there. Then I'm in Medina. I visit the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. Very lovely. And also it is worth of mentioning here that the Prophet ﷺ said, Wheresoever you are, send your peace and blessings upon me because it will reach me and I will reply back to you. Aynama takunu yasiluni salamukum. Wheresoever you are, your peace and blessings, your salutation will reach me because Allah have appointed angels whose, as He said in the hadith, sayyahin, tourists, they tour the globe. They gather and collect the salam that you, me, and people in Russia, people in the States, people in India send to Prophet Muhammad and they deliver that to him. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, replies back with the saying, then Allah blesses you for it ten times. May the best peace and blessing be upon Prophet Muhammad We're going to take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home. Will be broke Through the powerfully vivid, spiritually uplifting, heart softening, life changing, soul transforming descriptions of life after death, we reminded ourselves about the barrier that is placed. So once you leave this world, a barrier is placed behind you, and you are prevented from coming back to this life. Those two rak'ahs that you used to pray, you used to take for granted. After you leave this world, there's a barrier. The journey of the soul through the stages of the day of resurrection and the explicit descriptions of hellfire as well as the beautiful and spiritually uplifting descriptions of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we did not create the heavens and the earth without purpose, without aim, without a reason. This is the assumption of those who disbelieve. So beware and low to those who disbelieve from the help. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us immediately the example of the righteous people on the day of judgment. So he says, Ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, No doubt, verily, the awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah, those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no fear on them, nor shall they grieve. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Sister Aisha from Nigeria asked a um, couple questions. Wearing perfume upon leaving home for a woman who's married and similarly wearing makeup. And she kept saying that a woman who's already married. Um, the hukm will not be any different than if a woman uh, is single and looking for to get married or if she's already married. Because the viewers do not distinguish between a woman who is married and a woman who wants to get married. And the hukm will not change accordingly. There are many hadith in this regard. Some of them are very harsh. You know, take for innocence Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said in the sound hadith, and this hadith, as I said, is very harsh because it says there is a severe warning against a woman who wears perfume deliberately so that when she passes by people, by men, they find her fragrance and they look at her. He said, In another hadith which is collected by Imam al-Nasai, Zainab al thaqafiyyah May Allah be pleased with her, narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا خَرَجَتْ إِحْدَى كُنَّ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ فَلَا تَقَرَبَنَّ طِيبًا Even if you go into the masjid, you should not wear any perfume. Um, let's take this call and we'll continue inshallah after. Assalamu alaikum. Um Rayyan from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Um Rayyan. Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the program. How are you? Fine, alhamdulillah. Thank, Thank you. you for being on hold for some time. It's okay, brother. To talk to you is uh, like so much knowledge. Like we can khayran. wait. Thank you. May Allah bless you and your family. Okay. And brother, I have a question. Uh, if someone borrowed some money, but nobody knows and he died, like a, like a father or brother or sister, like close relative, but we don't know he borrowed some money from someone and how much amount and we want to pay but i don't know how to do it so that he won't be you know uh, he gets not punished for you know having the loan from someone mm. i mean can we do like anonymous uh, charity okay. for the person who gave the money okay and my second question is that uh, for the uh, Fidya of Rosa, if I don't know if somebody didn't fast for how many days, so how should I give the Fidya? I want to, instead of giving charity, if giving the Rosa Fidya, but don't know the count, so what should I do, like making what Nia? Thank you, Sister Um Rayyan from the USA. Uh, let's take one more hadith with regards to the prohibition of wearing perfume and similarly make up for a woman upon leaving home, even if she's going to the masjid. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, a very famous and a great companion, uh, said that once a woman passed by him, and she was on her way to the masjid, and she was wearing fragrance, perfume. He said, Ya Amat al-Jabbar, al-Masjid al-Turideen, O servant of the irresistible, the most powerful, are you heading to the masjid? Are you going to the masjid? She said, yes. وَلَهُ تَطَيَّبْتْ And that's why I'm wearing my best perfume because I'm going to the masjid. He said, فَرْجِعِي فَغْتَاسِلِي Go home. Wash off yourself. Wash off this perfume. Because I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, مَا مِنْ مْرَأَةٍ تَخْرُجُ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ تَعْصِفُ رِيحُهَا فَيَقْبَلُ اللَّهُ مِنْهَا صَلَاةً حَتَّى تَرْجِعَ إِلَى بَيْتِهَا فَتَغْتَاسِلْ And this is as far as for going to the masjid. He said, he told her that, okay, you did this with a good intention. You wore in perfume because you're going to the masjid. But I heard Rasulullah Sallallahu saying that if a woman wears perfume and she goes to the masjid and her fragrance is volatile and people can find her fragrance, even if she prays, the prayer will be invalid. It will not be accepted. Unless if she goes home and wash it off, then she offers her prayer. There are many a hadith in the sagad. I just quoted some. So um, the, the reason is, uh, I'm pretty sure that many of you got to see uh, a video was filmed in New York City that a woman, I don't know whether she is uh, Muslim or not, but some people um, put a hidden camera and followed a woman wearing ordinary clothes, 
but she was not wearing hijab, you know. And how many sexual harassment that she had over a period of six hours or so. And the same woman, in another day, she put on the hijab and she walked in the same streets before the same lousy people and not a single person, not a single person harassed her or picked on her or even looked at her. This is filmed and it's available on the YouTube app, um, you know. This is the reason why Allah ordered women to wear hijab. So that men and women both will keep modesty. Not just for themselves, but for the entire society. Sister Aisha, again, it doesn't make any difference whether the woman is married or not married. Brother uh, Anwar uh, from the KSA said that a friend of his is coming from abroad, just to al Medina to visit the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, and he said that there is a hadith in this regard. I'm very familiar with this hadith. The hadith says, مَنْ زَارَ قَبْرِي وَجَبَتْ لَهُ شَفَعَتِي What does it mean? The hadith says, whoever visits my grave, my intercession will be due for him. Okay. In order to act upon any statement, number one, we have to verify whether it's sound or not. The hadith, there are three views with regards to its a decategorization of its authenticity. The first view, which is adopted by uh, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, said this hadith is not even a hadith, it's fabricated. Al Imam al Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him, says this hadith is very weak. Al Imam al Zahabi considers this hadith um, a Hassan hadith or a fair hadith. In other case, yes, I'm saying in other case. The Prophet ﷺ says, if you repeat after the Mu'adhan five times a day, and you say, Allahumma rabba hadihi al-da'wati al-tamma wa salati al-qa'ima, the invocation after the adhan, you will be eligible for his intercession. Five times a day, wheresoever you are. When you fly from overseas thousands of miles, or you come even hundreds of miles to the peninsula, to the sacred places, why don't you come up with the Umrah? Why don't you visit Mecca and perform Umrah? It's only a few hours extra. And if you fly to Jeddah first, then uh, you fly to Medina, that's another 45 minutes flight. You know? Yes, indeed, when you visit the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu each prayer you offer there is a thousand times better than praying anywhere else. But the Hadith says, except in Al-Masjid Al-Haram, because praying in Al-Masjid Al-Haram is awarded for each prayer a hundred thousand times more. Well, I still intend just to visit Medina. That's permissible. You're not, you're not committing sin. Okay? But not because of the hadith. Rather because of the other hadith which says that you're not allowed to assume a journey to visit any masjid except any of these three masjids. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Abud from Uganda. <laughs> Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Brother Abud. Yeah, I see I have uh, one question. Naam. Yeah, I have my land. Okay, try again. No problem. Anjum from the KSA. They are residents in Mecca. But sometimes they travel abroad. Whether they go to Medina, four or five hundred miles, or they go to Jeddah, less than a hundred miles. Um, Yani they go outside the sanctuary, the haram. Every time they return to Mecca, do they have to assume Umrah? No, 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 no. Assuming the intention of Ihram to perform Umrah only if you're planning on performing Umrah. Even myself, I'm not Mecca resident. If I'm going to have a meeting in Mecca, then I'm not planning on performing Umrah. I don't have to assume the intention of Ihram. I'm going to do business in Mecca. I don't have to assume the intention of Ihram. al mawaqit or the appointed points of assuming the intention of Ihram from, are only prescribed if you're planning on performing Umrah. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Um Fatima from Nigeria, welcome to the program. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Numerous contribution to our lives. It's been wonderful, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. 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 Um, Sheikh, please, I just want 
you to educate the Umamo this new work of pre-wedding photos that you see on social media are newly we- we- uh, married couples. They put it on before the wedding just to show that they're getting married. It's really getting bad. It's really getting bad. Oh, yes, yes, I couldn't but agree. Thank you, Sister Umu Fatima from Nigeria. Next, and let's make it the last until I answer the pending questions. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Muhammad from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, Akhi, to the program. Wa jazakum. Akhi, I have one question regarding uh, um, visiting back to my country. Like, uh, I am most of the time I am a resident of Dubai, but when I am visiting back to my country in Kerala, mm. uh, the masjid near me yeah, is like, uh, uh, I don't know whether it's a bidah, but uh, mostly like there is all the things are there which I consider it, you know, it's, it's against the sunnah. Like, uh, for example, uh, dua uh, after the salah, uh, there is... Uh, 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 sorry, salat, salat every week, uh, you know, half, you know, on the Thursday night of every week. Uh, there is kunut every day. Uh, you know, there are a lot of things. I mean, there is uh, every month there is maulid. Uh, all these things are there. So my question is, uh, uh, should I continue to, because there is um, the masjid, which is not having all these things, slightly far away for me. So uh, how should I join the Imam, uh, continue to join the Imam and continue my Salah or should I prefer yes. to go to Akhi, the Akhi Muhammad, uh, with all what you mentioned, that if it is the only masjid in your neighborhood, yes, join the Imam and pray in Jama'ah, not to miss the word of praying in congregation. Okay? But of course, if there is another masjid uh, where you can reach easily to attend the Jama'ah, it would be more worthy to pray there. Okay. Sister Juwairiya from Uganda, uh, there is a tradition there, parents push their kids at the age of 18 to go out to find wives, to find husbands, to find boyfriends or girlfriends. The letter is entirely rejected, disapproved. This is, this is a practice that leads to uh, committing adultery and fornication. But for the parents to encourage their youth, their children, um, who reach a marriageable age to get married, that is permissible and recommended. And they should also assist them, help them to find the right suitor, help them financially if it is possible, because um, a teenager at the age of 18 just barely finished high school, doesn't have any fun, doesn't, cannot even afford to, to live by himself or herself, especially whenever it's a girl. What do you mean that go and find a man to marry or a boyfriend? That makes no sense. You are just pushing them to the edge. You're throwing them in harm's way. Rather, the person should uh, realize that your children eh, are your best investment. That's why we get married. We get married so that we leave that heritage, righteous children to pray for us and to maintain this faith and religion on earth. So we have to assist them to choose the right life mate and the soul mate. And again, you will be definitely rewarded this is an act of charity, similar to giving the poor and the needy, when you assist your child financially to get married, not to push them out and say, go and get married. We all understand that at this age, it's impossible. It's definitely impossible. Unless if your child is not resuming their education, and they do handiwork, and they have a profession, and they earn, so they have an experience, and they can make their living. But for somebody who is completely dependent on his parents, you're asking them for uh, simply going astray. May Allah guide us to what is best. Sister Aisha from Nigeria, three of your questions out of five because we only get three. If somebody uh, re- forgot a rak'ah, for instance, in the prayer, then after the prayer is over, he remembered. But he remembered within the prayer, so he prayed the extra rak'ah but he forgot to pray sujood al-sahu and he left, the prayer is, is valid. If the person forgot to pray sujood al-sahu and the sujood was regarding missing a sunnah, not a fard or a wajib or a pillar, the prayer is still valid because you forgot. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina. Do not blame us if we forget. 
أو أخطأنا if we err then if the person prayed by minus three rakas or two rakas then he left he completely forgot that he was missing a rakah accordingly he did not pray this rakah no surur sah the prayer is invalid if he were to know if somebody told him that you only pray two rakas come back and start from the scratch because due to tool al fasl has been a long time between the prayer and being reminded or remembering can one make dua in ruku' or sujood for himself or herself yes you can uh, can one make the tasmiyah if he or she is making wudu or ablution in the place of answering the call of nature most of us we have the sink the basin in the bathroom so the bathroom is a place of answering the call of nature no you should not mention the name of Allah in these places step out say bismillah and enter to wash your hand and begin your wudu Sister Umm Rayyan from the USA, a relative died and his family members are not sure whether he's in debt or not. If you're not sure, you don't have any confirmation, then you're not blameworthy and you're not required to do a thing. Somebody showed up and said that, hey, your late husband owes me 10 grands. Do you have a document? No, I don't. Do you have witnesses? No, I don't. Then in this case, you're not required to pay him a penny. Who's blameworthy? Both. The debtor and the lender. In fact, Allah the Almighty said in the longest ayah in the Quran, which is known as Ayah al Dain by the end of Surah Al Baqarah, Ya ayuhal ladina amanu, ida tada yantum bidain ila ajalim musamman faktubu. When you borrow from each other, when you take loans for a fixed term, write it down. Write it down. And also there is an indication of Al Ishhad. You have to have witnesses. So having a written statement is very important to secure everybody's right. We have to understand that a shaheed, the one who dies on the battlefield, the martyr, all his sins will be forgiven except if he's in debt. That will not be forgiven. That's between him and another human being. Unless if this person were to pardon him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is not permissible for a person who has something valuable to go to sleep for two nights without having his wasiya bequest or well written beneath his pillow. If you owe somebody money, especially if it is a significant amount, you have to write it down. Let your wife know, let your children know that I owe this person that much. In case anything happens to you, please pay it off. This is essential. But assuming that he may have been in debt and we don't know, you're not blameworthy, nor are you required to do a thing. If you want to give any charity in his state, that's an accepted charity and its reward, inshallah, will definitely, will definitely benefit him. Um, paying the ransom for fasting if the person owed fasting. You can make the, that fasting on his state if they die. Because there is a hadith in the cigar where the Prophet ﷺ said, فَدَيْنُ اللَّهِ أَحَقُّ أَنْ يُقْضَى but if the person was sick and died in that sickness, you don't have to make up anything in his state. You can also pay the fidya, which is ita'amu miskin, as it is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, I believe 184. Fafidyatun ita'amu miskin. One poor person per each day that the person owes. He owes 15 days, 20 days, 30 days, feed that many people, uh, equivalent to that number, in one meal or give them <coughs> meals individually, scattered in different places, but give them meals, feeding, not giving them uh, the cash. Uh, sister Um uh, Fatima from Nigeria, um, and that is the last question, by the grace of Allah, said the, the new trend where people, the new words, they post the pictures and images uh, on the social media and all of that, how many times I said that, you know, when Allah the Almighty orders me to lower my gaze as a man and not to look at any other woman who is not lawful to me, not to look at beauty, even the images, even the pictures. So this man is actually projecting his wife's image or his fiance's picture while she is fully adorned for thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people to look at. That is not permissible. 
brothers and sisters. By the end, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us what is best, to forgive us our sins. May Allah keep steadfast on his straight path. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart you'll remember